just uh, not worried at all. All right, so I want to talk about uh, conservation of angular, of angular momentum. Now that we've talked about angular momentum, I want to talk about the conservation of angular momentum and how you change angular momentum. And to do that, you use an angular impulse. Just like we did a, a linear impulse to change linear momentum, we use an angular impulse to change angular momentum. First, let me talk about conservation of angular momentum. Angular momentum, you know, is moment of inertia times angular velocity, right? Okay. So, what I can do is, I've got moment of inertia, angular velocity, angular momentum, unless I apply a change in angular momentum, it's going to be constant. But while I'm doing that, I can adjust the components of the angular momentum without changing the final value. If I increase the moment of inertia, if I double the moment of inertia, that would cut the angular velocity in half. And L, angular momentum, would still be the same. If I reduce the moment of inertia, I would increase the angular velocity. For example, I put the moment of inertia in my hands. I put my hands out and increases the moment of inertia. It moves mass away from my body. I move one leg away from my body. Now I start to spin. As I bring in the moment, as I bring in my mass, I increase the moment of inertia. Excuse me, I reduce the moment of inertia and increase the angular velocity. So that's how a somersault, that's how a person does a somersault on a trampoline. What they do is when they come up, they have a little bit of angular velocity. They bring everything together and reduce their moment of inertia as much as possible. They do a quick flip. They open up, reduce their angular, the moment of uh, inertia, and then reduce their angular velocity. So that's conservation of angular momentum. Now, to change angular momentum, you need to provide an angular impulse. See, for a linear impulse, it's a change in angular momentum. We talked about how a change in linear momentum is uh, a force times the time you apply it. Now, for an angular impulse, it's the angular equivalent of force. It's the torque. You apply a torque for a certain amount of time. If you want to, oh, come on. If you want to stop a wheel, you apply a torque. And the longer I apply the torque, the more I stop it. All right? So you can change the angular momentum by applying a torque for a certain amount of time. Come on. So let's say I've got this, uh, mm, let's say I've got this disc. And the disc is spinning around. It's a solid disc. And it's got a mass of um, it's got a mass of 20 kilograms. And it's got a radius of uh, half a meter. OK. And it's got an angular velocity. of uh, 60 revs per minute. And that's uh, yeah, counterclockwise. Let's put it that way. Since uh, angular momentum it depends on the direction, it's a vector. So first, what's the moment of inertia? Well, the moment of inertia for a solid disk is one half mass times radius squared, which is one half, 20 kilograms, times 0 0.5 meters squared, which is uh, two and a half. kilogram 
meters squared. Okay, the next thing I want to do is we should find out what the angular momentum is. Well, the angular momentum is the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. Now, the angular velocity, I needed the radians per second. So I've got 60, and I'll say rev over a minute. There are two pi radians per rev. Revolutions cancel, and I've got radians per minute. I need to get rid of minutes. I've got, uh, let's see, there's one minute for every 60 seconds. This is all counterclockwise. And I just made sure the minutes were on top so they cancel out. I'm going to get radians per second. And I get an answer of uh, about 6.28 radians per second. Counterclockwise. I'll just remind you, you know, if you're looking at these, you can pause at any time. Just take it all in. Make sure you do these on your own. Don't trust me. And it's like, it's a lot easier to watch it. It seems like it makes sense. But it doesn't make sense really until you do it on your own.